everyone so uh, a little bit ahead of schedule but i want to talk about this fight between jose aldo versus mario batista mario batista is being given a huge step up in competition and uh it's an interesting matchup to say the least but kind of in a weird spot for jose aldo to be given this matchup uh because when jose aldo left the ufc uh he was on a win streak i believe he had beaten uh marlon vera which, you know, aged a bit better and then not as good recently, but still still a top 15 win, top 10 win, actually. Uh, and then he beat freaking, what was his fuck? Pedro Munoz, good win to have, honestly. And then he beat Rob Font. Rob Font was on a streak at that point, so this isn't like the modern-day Rob Font. So that was three wins in a row that were very good. And he was in a fight for a title shot against Marab Dvalvili, and who is currently, you know, he has a title, he has a title shot coming up soon against Sean O'Malley, and yes, he lost decision, and it was kind of a clear decision win for Marab Devalishvili, but Marab did not uh, manage to take down Jose Aldo, not a single time, I believe in like 20 te- te- takedown attempts, could not get him down, he did pu- uh, push him against the cage and kind of like out-muscle him and out-cardio him uh, for those three rounds, which did suck to see, and definitely made a lot of people hate Marab Devalishvili, it's whatever, uh, but then Jose Aldo, he left the UFC, he competed in some boxing matches, and then he made a surprise return for, I believe, three, yeah, 301 against Jonathan Martinez, who was, at the time, you know, kind of a surging, uh, surging bantamweight, uh, had just beaten Adrian Yanez, I believe, has, like, two, uh, like, leg kick TKOs, which is kind of crazy, uh, beat Syed Nurmagomedov, he beat Nurmagomedov, which is an impressive feat. Uh, to say the least, uh, but, you know, kind of an interesting matchup, and I, I picked Jose Aldo, I thought, uh, John, Jonathan Martinez, outside of, uh, having a bit of some decent takedowns and, uh, good kicks was not, uh, well, well rounded enough to outstrike Jose Aldo, who is a phenomenal boxer and, and on, also can take, just take you down to the ground, you know, very well rounded, very, a very difficult style to be, in my opinion, you have to be, pretty high level you have to be I think really you have to be a champion or a title a title contender to beat him and even then you might lose uh but you know he managed to win he won a unanimous decision very clear win good he got placed in like barely in the top 10 I believe and then I was like okay so they're gonna give him like uh Corey Sanhagen or they're gonna give him uh oh I know what they could do they give him Dominic Cruz because Dominic Cruz hasn't done anything since getting head kicked KO'd by Marlon Vera who's you know still in the rankings somehow I know, let's give him Mario Batista, and I'm not saying, like, Mario Batista is bad or anything, but he's, like, barely in the rankings, and he only has, like, one freaking uh, ranked win against Ricky Simone, and now, the main question is, does the UFC hate uh, freaking Jose Aldo or something, and I think if Jose Aldo wins this fight, you know, he's he's beaten two surging young contenders in a row, give him a title elimination bout, because he'll be on a two-fight win streak, and honestly, against two 15 guys, his wins are still relevant. It's still relevant somewhat, so I feel like that's the only thing you can do. But if Mario Batista wins, you know, now you start talking about uh, he's like two fights away from a title shot. Uh, so it's, it is an interesting concept, even though I'm not a big fan of this matchup. And I feel like uh, it's, it's just kind of weird and a bit disrespectful to Jose Aldo, who it's not like he's been like... Uh, rank rank setting. He fought Jonathan Martinez. He fought the up and coming dude in the top fifteen. He should not have to do it twice when Dominic Cruz can't even fight anybody at this point. So it's kind of shocking. But in my opinion, I think Jose Aldo is going to win. And you know, people are like, "Oh, Mario Batista. He's on a he's on a good win streak." Which yes, by the numbers, he is on a good win streak, and there are some good wins here. Ricky Simone, I think, is a pretty decent win, uh, and he finished him. Uh, he beat Damone Blackshear, which, in my opinion, I think it was by, like, split decision. I, when I watched it, I thought Damone Blackshear won that fight, kind of, at least to me, it was clear, but I need to re-watch it, but the point is, it was very clear, and then Damone Blackshear, uh, I think he just lost his most recent fight, uh, so it's not necessarily aging the best, uh, and his two losses in the UFC, one is against Corey Sanhagen, which, is not really that is not really a bad loss. I know Corey Sandhagen just lost to a like guy like number twelve Umar Nurmagomedov who didn't have a ranked win at that point, and it was a very bad performance. Besides the first round, which I even thought he lost, but he still looked pretty decent in. Uh, not a, not a bad loss, not a bad loss to have in my opinion. But 
I don't think I think he might have gotten finished, but he also might have just gone to decision with him, which you know if it's a decision, pretty that's pretty good. But then he also lost to Trevin Jones, which is not a good loss to have against. If any, if you are one of like two wins that Trevin Jones has in the UFC, I think it was like two and five. Uh, and no, I think actually he had like one win overturned because he smoked weed, so it's not like steroids, but you get the idea. Uh, that's not really good, and I think he got finished by Trevin Jones, so that's not good if that's the case. Uh, but they put on a win streak. I know he had been uh, Miles Johns, who I think is going to be fighting uh, Cody Garbrandt soon, and he like flying knee TKO'd that dude, so that was a pretty good win. Uh, Benito Lopez, I believe, was another one he had. He does have a lot of finishes, so there's a finishing potential that I don't think uh, necessarily Jose Aldo has the same, because Jose Aldo... Even I I love him. He's one of my favorite fighters of all time. I think he's a top 10 uh, greatest fighter of all time from his featherweight run and to his freaking bantamweight run. It's undeniable, in my opinion. He has not been the biggest finisher in at least his UFC career. WEC was a different Jose Aldo. And the big thing that is uh, really kind of making me question a bit is Jose Aldo is a lot older. He's... You know, he's closer to 40 than uh, freaking uh, Mario Batista. I think Mario Batista's 31, maybe 32. So he's in his prime, like, exactly, uh, while Jose Aldo is past 35, which, you know, as we see from, like, how it's worked for Alexander Volkanovsky. Uh, I am interested to see because Jose Aldo has beaten these kind of, these, like, uh, being the stats beforehand. He has won at, like, thir- I, think he was, I think he's 37 or 38, but he won at the age of 37 against freaking uh, Jonathan Martinez and looked good. He is definitely a technique fighter. And he does have power. He just doesn't get finishes is my kind of thing. Like, he, he doesn't have, like, I'm going to drop you or I'm going to, like, uh, like you know, KO you or TKO you or make you run. But it's going to hurt and it's going to, like, kind of add up and it's just going to make allow him to do things better. Like, he isn't, like, pillow fisted to where people can just kind of walk in front of him. Like, people get hurt, and then they kind of need to fight smarter, and you can't really outstrike uh, Jose Aldo unless you're, like, uh, you know, like Max Holloway or Volkanovski. Even though Volkanovski did grapple a bit, but he did outstrike him in that match. You can't you can't, you can't, can't tell me he didn't. Uh, and then, you know, there's Peter Yan also did, but it was competitive. But you get the idea. Uh, very few people are outstriking this dude, out-techniquing him on the feet, uh, and if you are doing on it, you are among the elite of strikers in the UFC. So it is an interesting matchup because Mario Batista, very well-rounded. Honestly, if he wasn't, I feel like he would beat a lot of these top 15 guys, uh, but I don't think he beats Jose Aldo. I think Jose Aldo is, he's got a good enough chin to uh, to beat him. He has better cardio than he somehow did at featherweight, which is shocking to me because that was my that was a big issue a lot of people had when he went down to bantamweight was like, this guy gases out in the four, fourth and fifth rounds, sometimes the late third round against other contenders. Sorry, got some, like, gas in my system or something. Uh, but he's he's doing all of this stuff to him. Uh, he's, he's, sorry, he's not able to really go as hard. He slows down pretty considerably. But, and then he's moving down to band weight, and he's doing good at that. So, but Jose Aldo, he looked good in Jonathan Martinez's fight. He seems to still have the good technique of it. Uh, Chin seems to still be good of it. I think he will be able to win a 29-28 decision against Mario Batista. I think it will be a very competitive matchup, but I think we will know who will win this. And, you know, it's kind of early prediction. We'll have to see as fight as the fights kind of roll closer. I think it's 308 is what it is. I know it's the Salt Lake City, which is at altitude, so I'm kind of curious, but I don't know. I, I trust Jose Aldo more than I trust Mario Batista is my thing, which is kind of my basis of this prediction. But, you know, that's going to be it for me. I know I know we're a while from this fight, but I kind of wanted to talk about it because it is such an interesting uh, dynamic of just who Jose Aldo is and kind of the circumstances. I'm not really a fan of the matchup. I know I've said it before. Uh, it's not the worst matchup, but I think it's very undeserved to do that to Jose Aldo. I think Jose Aldo should be fighting someone in the top 10 at least. And I think Mario Batista does deserve a step up. He ha- He is in the rankings. He is on a good win streak, uh, but I would have given him someone also, like, in the top 15. Just, you know, give him another ranked win because I think his only ranked win is freaking Ricky Simone, who is no longer in the rankings. 
So we have to really like kind of think about that where we kind of put the like his his win streak looks good on paper. He only has two losses. Uh, but you know, you got to kind of like look at it is my thing of it. Do I think, uh, I think Mario Batista's best chance of winning is getting like a submission. Uh, but I don't even know has, if anyone has submitted Jose Aldo. I don't think anyone has. I know people have finished him like TKO'd him like Max Holloway did it. Uh, but you get the idea. He's not like the hard, he's not like the easiest person to finish. You kind of have to be elite. And if saying if, if Mario Batista finishes him, beats him, let alone finishes him, he's, I would be putting him as a uh, as like kind of the dark horse, which he kind of is the dark horse. We got the idea, but I've rambled enough, talked enough, you know, just trying to talk more on it. Uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. We have uh, I know I know as time recording this uh, in like two days, we'll have freaking uh, Gilbert Burns or Sean Brady. Uh, I think I'm gonna go Sean Brady on that fight. I think Gilbert Burns in this case is a lot older, has gone through more wars, taken more damage. Uh, he got finished pretty bad by, uh, Jack Del Maddalena, uh, his freaking like, shoulder and arm injury against Bilal Muhammad, his war of Hamzat Shemaev getting finished by freaking uh, Kamaru Usman. I just think it's the wear and tear, and I think Sean Brady is a much better grappler in terms of MMA grappling. I don't know about Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, uh, but, you know, that's kind of a debatable thing, but I think, I think Sean Brady with how good his takedowns were against Kelvin Gastelum. I think unless you're a Bilal Muhammad somehow, I think he can take you down. And his striking isn't the worst thing I've ever seen. So that's kind of my prediction there. I had it in there. But that's going to be it from me. Bye.